All right, guys. Um, <clears throat> there's my uh, generator project for mounting my generator on the front of my truck. Uh, found a piece of steel in the scrap yard. Seven dollars. It's like 32 pounds. There's way more steel than I need, but price was right. I ordered this. I wish I could have found this in the scrap yard, but I couldn't find the right size. And this is made for receiver, right thickness and everything. And has a little more money, and I want to spend around 30 bucks. So um, today, I'm going to see about putting the generator box on there or not putting the generator box because there is a sizable difference. I'm thinking if I could bolt the generator to that plate. Sure would save a lot of bulk on the front of that truck. And I would be reassured that this thing is uh, going to be cooled properly. So I'm really kind of rethinking my my generator box idea. Or maybe, maybe I'll put the generator box on the front of the cargo camper and have it for that. I don't know yet. Um, anyway, we'll see as it comes together. I'm leaning towards just the generator only and try to secure it by bolting. Let me show you. Try to secure it by taking these feet off. They're bolted on. And then bolting through through these feet to a pad and then somehow securing the bottom so they can't uh, take them off. That's why I'm leaning anyway. The box is just so big and it adds quite a bit of weight to the front. Somebody mentioned uh, oil cooler. There's no oil cooler down here. It's pretty much, uh, this is more for like a diesel. This opening right here is more for like an intercooler for a diesel because there's my transmission oil cooler, I believe, right here. Or oh, that might be power steering. But uh, anyway, I don't see any, any oil cooler down here that will interfere with the, you know, the air being blocked by the generator so definitely think I'm going that route it's a lot lighter and uh, it's gonna be easier to transport we gotta find some fasteners that are uh, like security fasteners to go through the bottom of the generator and I will probably end up mounting it just like that so I'm taking off the feet the rubber uh, feet and I'm gonna install some longer bolts these are uh, six millimeter six by ten on the originals and these are six by forty i think so just gonna try to use my old plate for my old uh, box camper
kind of debating if I should cut the end of the tube here or it'll slide back in there and just leave the excess slid back in there and redrill the hole. I'm kind of thinking about that. I don't know yet because I may be able to use it elsewhere. Because if I do that, then I might be able to put it on the back also. Who is hot out here today? Because I'll need the excess to extend it out. You can always cut it off if it doesn't work out. It's just, just more work. Luckily, everything seems to work still hot. I just ran a bead on this side, and uh, that'll lock it in. Yeah. Slides in. It locks the bottom plate of the generator so it can't come out. And then I got a puck lock. I'm going to add a uh, rubber on the side of this to keep this nice and tight um, so it doesn't vibrate and make a bunch of, uh, bunch of noise because you have to worry about the metal shaking and stuff with the generator. Over here I have a 12 3 extension cord that I got off of uh, Amazon right around 20 bucks. It's 25 foot long and I'm going to run this from the generator in the front all the way back to the camper. And uh, I don't plan on running anything, you know, over this size in that camper. It's just a small camper. It's going to be kind of temporary. Not temporary, but just for uh, sleeping in and, you know, maybe keeping the dogs cool with air conditioning in it. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty pretty happy with the little generator stand there. I like it better than my big box idea because that thing's going to be pretty bulky on the front. Might uh, and probably would have ended up blocking some of the um, radiator but probably not enough to make a difference, but I'll use that elsewhere. This is a 12-3, uh, it's good for 20 amps. Should be good. This will also be uh, how I hook to shore power. It's just gonna come right out of here, I'll just plug another extension cord into it and into the shore power, and uh, it'll power the camper in the back. Well, in the frame, and I'm going to go on back and then go on up to the camper. Yeah, I measured it at 15 feet, but I ended up buying 25 feet because that's the length it came in. But man, I sure am glad I did now because I just barely have enough. Yeah, I've been having uh, trouble with leaks in the seal right here. There's nothing that I don't have any kind of seal in there, or but I've got some uh, solution which is the same stuff that they use on those uh, box trucks. And it's, uh, I've used it on the box camper that I had and the stuff works great. I got gray and black, which I'm gonna use, there's gray and black. And I'm gonna use black to fill in that seam all the way around. And uh, try to seal it up so that um, I don't have any leaks. I bought three tube, uh, four tubes of this stuff at eight, about eight dollars a tube. Thinking I would use one on this side, one on the other side, but right now it looks like I'm going to have use one for the whole thing. That's how it seals up that little gap right there. Okay, guys, you want to see the uh, final product? Well, close to the final product. Uh, this is what I've got here. Got my uh, uh, hitch made by Kurt. I think I paid like mm, 50 to 75 bucks for that. And my homemade generator stand here. I'll show you how it all goes together. It's a quick mock up. And just slap some paint on it. But it is strong. Notice I've got two uh, two notches here, 
so I can put it on the back and I could use the rear one and then I can you know put it in the front and I use this this front hole um, I use this lock this is not the best and I'll probably replace it with a much better one but this is what I've got on hand right now so in here. I've got this little uh, shores up the hitch because right now it's a little, a little loose and rattly. To prevent that, I just use this little thing made by Retric. I don't know, they, they sell them all over uh, Amazon. So you can see it's it's pretty sturdy. And the way the generator clips in here, let me see. goes up underneath this little edge. Like this. Rocks right in there. Got this little bar right here slides in and locks the generator in place. I've got a little foam pad here that will protect it from vibration so it doesn't rattle too much with the lock on it. Plug our little cord in here. And as you can hear from back here, you hardly hear the generator at all. It's a pretty quiet generator to begin with, but uh, where it matters back here in the cabin. I'm going to keep the wiring simple back here. Um, probably not going to use these breakers at all. I'm just going to have a power strip hooked to the generator, power strip uh, for shore power. I uh, don't need much more than that. Got a nice little cover for it off Amazon. When it's not in use, you just keep the little cover on it. And when the generator is not in use, it'll reside there. When I want to keep it out of sight and out of mind. And basically for the front over there, it's like when I'm, I'm actually using it, be mounted up here and when I, you know, know we're going somewhere. So, yeah, that's it. About 30, maybe 30, 40 dollars worth of steel and work and a little bit of time. I think I, I've got a pretty good setup now. Hey, thanks for watching my channel. If you haven't subscribed already, uh, please do for future updates. Remember, build it, don't buy it.